welcome to this video tutorial on how to create an atmospheric rain scene in V-Ray from Rhino. I'm going to be using this simple scene I've set up here where we have this building on top of this green hill here and currently the render to this looks a little bit like this where we've got our sort of building up on the hill and it's surrounded by this sort of flat water scene here which you can see going in and out of the rocks we've created in this landscape. Now to begin with we're going to change the time of day of this scene into a nighttime scene to more accurately reflect the kind of weather you get when it's a sort of stormy rainy evening. So to do that I'm going to be using this Rhino document sun that I have controlling the current lighting in the scene and we're just going to lower that vertical angle of the sun below the horizon like so. So just to a sort of minus two on that vertical angle. So the sun has set but we've got this nice kind of dusky looking sky you'll see the building is still lit up in this render and the reason for that is I've got these three sphere lights here which are controlling the lighting in my scene these are all cast in kind of different colors of light and I've got a blue, a red and an orange one of these and you can see the sort of blue and the red tones being cast against this landscape here and also reflecting in the building in addition to this I also have some lights inside the building here giving me light coming out of that structure now we've set up the lighting in our scene, we're now going to create the rain effect. To do this we're going to begin by creating a single raindrop which we're then going to scatter across our scene to create the effect of rain. To do this I'm going to just start by selecting the cylinder tool, finding a kind of small point in the scene to kind of clip onto, and making a cylinder with a radius of 1 centimeter and a height of around 15 centimeters. Once we've made that just going to zoom in on that cylinder so I can see it more clearly and then I'm going to just curve off the top and the bottom of this cylinder by creating a sphere, snapping on to the center point and creating that sphere there and then we're going to copy it to the bottom of that cylinder as well and once we've done that I'm just going to select the whole piece and select the boolean union tool to link that piece together. That's going to be our single raindrop here and what we now need to do is texture that to essentially act the same as our water texture is. So what I can do is I'm just going to open up the asset editor, find my water texture, we're going to right click and duplicate it there, we're going to call this rain, and then once I've made that I'm just going to apply that to my raindrop here, like so. So that raindrop has now got that water texture applied to it. So now we've made our single raindrop, we can now start to sort of scatter it over our scene to create the effect of rain. Now to do this I'm going to be using V-Ray's scatter tool and if you haven't sort of used this tool before I previously made a video on using it for landscapes and that goes through the basics of the tool so I'll put a link to that in the description but this really kind of uses the same techniques but does it on a vertical plane this time instead of a horizontal surface. So what we're going to begin to do is I'm going to just open up my plane creation tool and we're going to make a vertical plane and just looking in my eye level view I'm just going to essentially make a plane that stretches over this sort of area where my camera sees. So we're going to kind of make it stretch across there and we'll make it sort of around that high like so so you can see it in that view. Once I've made that, we're going to then open up the asset editor again. We're going to go down to create asset. We're going to go to geometries and to scatter. And we can rename this rain. And under my rain scatter, we're just going to apply this to that plane just by right clicking and apply to selection. And then where it says add guest, we're going to just select our little raindrop here which is at the very corner of this cube and hit add guest there and there you'll see it's come up there whatever name we've kind of given that particular object. Now at the beginning you won't see anything being scattered on this plane and that's because V-Ray can't quite understand when a plane is perfectly vertical how to scatter onto that surface so what I usually do is just rotate it slightly until you get that scattering occurring and there you can see each of the little raindrops and then what you can do is just rotate it back until it's just off vertical like so and it will detect that it can scatter on that surface and from there I'm just going to kind of up the density of that 
until we've got a good rain density. Now it probably at first the raindrops will probably be slightly too big so what I'll also do is just scroll down to the scale and we'll put a random minimum scale of a kind of 0.2 and a maximum one of a 0.4 so they're much smaller and you might also then need to increase the density again and essentially what you want is lots of little kind of drops of these rain on this surface. Now now we've done that, if we then click on our eye level view and start to render this out, what you'll find is we're going to get those raindrops scattered, but we're also going to get this big red plane that we've put there, and it will probably give it a kind of random colour, as you can see here, as it's dropped in. So that isn't really working, we've got that plane in the way, which is kind of hiding all our sort of geometry behind there. So essentially what we need to do is make sure that plane doesn't render in this view. And to do that, we can actually use a particular material in V-Ray to essentially give it a kind of non-renderable material. So to do this, we can just go create new material under here, and we're just gonna make a generic material for this. We'll call this material invisible. And once that's made, we're just gonna to go to the add attribute panel and add a ray trace property and this essentially controls the way an object renders so under there you'll see it gives a little tab in that generic material properties and here we've got visible to camera visible to reflections refractions and cast shadows and we're just going to turn all of those off and what happens there is you can see in the preview that the material essentially disappears and we've just got the kind of generic v-ray logo there so once that's happened we can then apply that to the selection and what you'll see is once this render updates, we might need to sort of stop and start it, is our plane will then essentially disappear in that view. And there you can see it's now rendering without that plane. Now, as you can see, you can see our sort of raindrops appearing now. And depending on the scale, these will sort of kind of appear a lot brighter or darker than others. Now, it might be that these ones I've done here are slightly too small in this case. So when you want to sort of change the scale, you can just go back to your rain scatter here, back down to your scale size, and let's just up that to a, a four to seven, for instance, and see how that affects it. And there you can see that a little bit more clearly now. Now the thing with rain, it will take a little bit of time to render out, just due to the fact that you've got lots and lots of these very sort of small particles that we're rendering. But the great thing with this technique is because we're rendering them in V-Ray, they will pick up the light and the kind of different lighting effects that will be hitting it around the scene. So you can see that these ones on the right hand side have got a kind of reddish colour to them. The ones on the left picking up some of that yellow light there as well. So they will act very much like real raindrops will do. And wherever there is light in the scene, they will reflect that light back at the camera. So currently that it's kind of just done one plane of rain there if we just stop that render for now and I'm just gonna minimize this you can see we've got that sort of one plane there but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a couple of layers of this now I've made them to really increase the density of that rain and to do that all I'm gonna do is that you just sort of draw out a couple more planes one at the foreground here and then one in the background as well and just making sure that it kind of completely spans over the camera and I'm just looking in that eye level view as I draw them to make sure the planes are big enough to kind of expand over the whole width of the camera and once you've made them we can select the plane and actually there's a kind of quicker way is if we go to the properties under V-Ray here under your little rainbow tab there's a little V-Ray icon we can scroll down to the scatter and you can just add the rain to that and like before we might have to rotate it slightly to get the rain applying on there and the same here and it will just kind of copy that scatter onto that surface like so and there we have a kind of few planes of that kind of rain material there and same again we just need to make sure that the planes these are applied to are also set to that invisible material we've made so they don't render out and that's just this one here like so. And once we've got that, we can do a quick test render to see how this appears. So let's just load up our preview again, make sure we're in the right view. 
and then do our test render. And now you can see as that's rendering out, we're getting a lot more of those sort of rain particles in. We're getting kind of different sizes and densities of rain as we kind of move back in the scene. Now, that's kind of all very well that we've created our raindrops now, but we're still lacking a little bit of that atmosphere that comes with a rainy day. And to start to sort of build that up, on top of this, I then begin to add an environmental fog to help create a sense of depth in that scene. That can easily be added just under the settings tab, under the volumetric environment, and we're just going to turn that on and make sure we have this environmental fog added. Now you can set sort of different um, distances and colours of this. I usually set the colour to a white. Um, the distance will be in the units of your scene, so this is just in metres, so that means it will kind of go 100 metres back and the height is in the units of the scene as well. So currently it's kind of low level fog that's sitting sort of three meters above the ground. We can set that higher if we want to, if we want a sort of higher fog that kind of spans up a bit, but I quite like the idea with the rain that you have it quite low level. So it's almost like the rain is kind of splashing back and creating a little bit of mist where it hits the ground. So that can help just with the sort of depth of that environment as well. Once we've made the fog, the next thing is to actually sort of adjust the water I've got in this scene here to reflect a kind of rainy day. At the moment it's perfectly still, but actually we'd have lots of raindrops kind of hitting that water and splashing and creating kind of ripple effects. So what we can do is go back to our materials under our water material here. We're going to go to the bump parameter and as we have done with water before, we're just going to begin by under the kind of bump map here I'm going to add in a noise and I'm going to add a noise B for this. It's got a little bit more control. And here you can see it's kind of created a ripply sort of water effect there. So we're just going to lower the size because that's quite big to a 0 0.01 like so. And if it's a bit too wavy, a little bit too ripply, we can just lower the colour of this colour A. You can just do that actually by kind of just scrolling down on this until those waves reduce and the lower that color is the kind of more close to white it is the less intense the ripples would be and it might be that it's kind of a bit too ripply I think that's probably about the right size for this one there one extra effect you can do to this to really sort of increase and sell the fact that these raindrops might be sort of splashing against the surface of the water is under the color B we can actually add another map in here if we click on there and go to a splat map here. We can create little kind of splatting textures and I usually go for a size of a 0 0.001 for this. You want it very small because these are very small sort of water droplets that are hitting the surface of this water. And what this would do is it's quite hard to see in this preview because it's a little bit sort of dark but what it's going to do is it creates small little dots on the surface of this water which will make it look like the kind of rain is dropping and hitting that surface and you can kind of see it at the bottom of this reflection the reflection is very broken up because it's got these kind of tiny little splats that are happening on that water surface which can really help sell that effect of the rain dropping now the final thing i want to do to this scene to really sort of portray that idea of a very rainy wet day is to just tweak this landscape texture at the front Currently it's very sort of um, matte in its appearance and actually if it was rainy it would be very shiny and wet and so you always want to make sure that you're kind of tweaking your materials to match the atmosphere of the scene you're trying to create and to do that we can just go to our rock texture under the reflection just up the reflection color to a white keep it glossy and here you'll see that it's now looking a lot more shiny and it might be that making it fully white is a little bit too much and we're getting kind of way too much reflection in there so what i usually do is just play around with that it might be a kind of mid gray that looks the best there but you just want something to pick up some of the reflections of the kind of surroundings so it makes it look like that rock is also slightly shiny and i'll keep the reflection glossiness on a one or a sort of naught point sort of nine or nine five to match that water so it's got the same sort of glossiness levels as the surrounding scene. Now we've rendered this out for a bit, another great thing about rendering the raindrops directly in V-Ray is it allows us to use the render elements to then enhance these in post-production. 
Now these can be found under the RGB color in your frame buffer here and I've set up a few of these in the scene. Now these are initially added using your asset editor and going to create asset and create render elements. And essentially what a render element is, is it splits your image into different elements of that image which focus just on the lighting or on the reflection or the refraction of the scene. Now in here I've set up the kind of raw reflection and here you can see it just shows all those kind of reflected raindrops in the scene which will be really useful for emphasizing that rain and that kind of levels of reflection. I've also got the raw refraction which also just emphasizes the see-throughness and the objects that are see-through within the scene and we can use that to kind of play up the rain as well. Another useful one is the Z depth which gives us a kind of gradient from a black to a white depending on how far away that object is from the camera which can really help just to give a sense of depth in the scene as well. So have a look at these render elements that you can find just in your asset editor under this render element setting and play around with a few of these adding them into your scene and then using them in Photoshop to start to kind of play up and intensify some of these effects that you're getting. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that it was helpful and you can use these effects for other things like sort of snow where you could scatter kind of snow particles using that scatter tool and create very similar kind of atmospheric scenes and effects. I hope you found this video useful and if you want to watch any other videos on creating different environmental aspects or materials and colours and lighting in V-Ray for Rhino please check out the videos on the channel.